You dishonor the memory of real terrorism victims when you use the word terrorist on non-terrorists. This edition of the Riddler Report is brought to you by We Use Coins. Back in the 1980s, my anti-IRA bias led me to cognitive dissonance. Of course, I still have a degree of that bias, but the dissonance is gone. I shouldn't have said dissonance. Dissonance. Cognitive dissonance. An article in Reason magazine back then said that it's not correct to refer to every IRA member as a terrorist. It depends on what they've done. If they've killed a policeman then that would make them a guerrilla warrior. If that, if they've killed a soldier, same thing. They might still be bad and wrong, but they're guerrilla fighters, not terrorists. The same goes for these British people who apparently hacked a soldier to death. Now, it's incredibly brutal. It sounds wrong, probably is wrong, but it's not terrorism. It's guerrilla war. At least, not by the way most of us really define terrorism. I realize there are dictionary definitions of terrorism that call it the use of violence to further a political end. But that's kind of a crazy definition because, I mean, that would, that would mean almost everyone's a terrorist. Because everyone, almost everyone, supports some government programs, and government programs have to use force to, to, to be carried out. So, we are at least funded. The dictionary definition is just too broad. Let me see, I'm going to look up a couple of definitions here. Yeah, Random House Dictionary 2013. Terrorism. Quote, the use of violence and threats to intimidate or coerce, especially for political purposes. Yeah, that's just, that's an unworkable definition. I think the dictionaries are just wrong. Because, yes, that would, that would play, I mean, it, it sort of, that definition plays into the hands of liberty activists because it points out the fact that the government is terroristic. But I, I'm not comfortable re using the same term to refer to the government and the people who blow up 9-11, or blow up the World Trade Center, assuming they're different. <laughs> I'm not really sure one way or the other. But if it was Islamic radicals uh, waging a sort of... Uh, asymmetric attack on civilians. That is just, that is different from what the government does. The government taxes people, it kills a few of them, it, you know, it, 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 it'll imprison a, a larger number, but it's just not the same as mass killing uh, you know, of their own people. That's not precisely what most governments do. Anyway, I just don't buy the idea, I mean, I think we need to make a distinction between government violence, which is aggressive, guerrilla violence, which can be aggressive or defensive, and terrorism, which is always uh, uh, aggressive. These are three very distinct practices and different distinct types of people. From everything I'm hearing so far, these two attackers of the British soldier fall clearly into that guerrilla category. They're perhaps considered, they could be considered unlawful combatants, not in uniform, acting on their own initiative or as part of a non-governmental group, acting in a relatively targeted and limited manner. They didn't apparently try to do anything to the average civilians who were there witnessing it. This is very different from something like the Boston bombing. That's real terrorism. Now, whether whoever perpetrated it, it's real, that's, that's terrorism because the targets are primarily civilians. There are plenty of bad things I'm sure we can say about guerrilla fighters without having to call them something that they're not, without having to misuse a term. It's gone so far, obviously, again, that the, the dictionaries are misusing it. Whether that plays into the hands of liberty lovers or not, they're still misusing the term. A terrorist should be defined, if it isn't, as a person who targets civilians, or at least innocent parties, innocent parties, or at least civilians, for, for acts of aggression. Uh, violent, limb-rendering type aggression. It takes a special sort of evil to do that, and that kind of person needs their own word. The word shouldn't be contaminated. It should be available in its pure form for use against the guilty. 
it waters the word down when you use it on practically everyone. Tim McVeigh, terrorist, targeted kids. Knew they were there. Struck during daylight hours when uninvolved bystanders were sure to be coming and going. Michael Collins, guerrilla fighter. Subcomandante Marcos in Mexico, guerrilla fighter. The Muslim soldier who attacked other soldiers at Fort Hood, guerrilla fighter. Like them or launch them, that's what they are. You dishonor the memory of real terrorism victims when you use the word terrorist on non-terrorists. Bitcoins, the world's first practical internet cash. A nightmare for governments to try and control. Inflation and counterfeit resistant. They return you some control over your money. And a new measure of anonymity. A lot cheaper to use than PayPal. You can use them to buy tax-free cigarettes. And almost anything else. I accept bitcoins. So can you. Get started at... We use coins... Dot com.